Today on America's Court with Judge Ross. I saw this Lego turtle and I ran up to it because I my mom asked her a question and she. <laughs> Don't Judge? let the charm fool you, Your Honor. Well, wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Do you remember being four? In my courtroom, it's about equity and fairness. You want him to pay six twenty-eight? Yes, Your Honor. All right, knock my socks off. Justice should be more than just some foreign concept. I actually want you to learn something. The law talks about something may in fact be true, but can they prove it? And that's what's tough. Fair, firm, compassionate. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Randy Gunther claims a valuable Lego sculpture was broken while it was on exhibit. Mr. Gunther is suing Sarah Wickham in the amount of $550. Ms. Wickham claims other sculptures at the exhibit were interactive, so her young daughter had no way of knowing the plaintiff's sculpture was fragile. All rise. Remain standing and come to order. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Kevin Ross presiding. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. All parties, Ms. Warren, Your Honor. Very good up Thomas. Your uh, art was destroyed. Yes, sir. And apparently, you had something to do with that, huh? Yes. Yeah. I broke the leg, Lego, Lego turtle because it was so pretty. I went up to Lego turtle because I could sit on it, and I I saw this Lego turtle and I ran up to it because I my mom asked her a question and she <laughs> didn't. don't Judge? let the charm fool you, Your Honor. Well, wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How okay. how old are you? Four. And what's your name? Carson. Carson. And Carson, you were with your mom out at a function? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And mom, what was going on at the function? We were at the mall, and there was um, an art exhibit in the main walkway at the mall, uh, and it was all these wonderful Lego sculptures, and they were larger than life, colorful, uh, and, and very exciting, especially for Carson. She saw them, and she just wanted to go run and, and be with them, and there were lots of other kids. And, and Mr. Gupta, you're display your art was part of this Lego display it was your honor okay and how did you know about this particular exhibit the director was a friend of mine we go back way way back to high school yes and he said there's this thing we got going on at the local mall and that you should definitely do it because he knew how much I am passionate about sculpting specifically okay I was deep into this Lego sculpture phase that I was going through because I've used other materials throughout the past and you like working with the Lego when I was a kid I didn't really have many friends so honestly I made Lego friends mm. and when this you understand the draw that Lego has for children it's something about when one Lego clicks into another, it's just... It, you it's understand here. that for children, it, it has a certain appeal. With the colorfulness, I definitely right. see that. Because yeah. you yourself, when you were a child, you were enamored by Lego. Yes, Your Honor. And how old were you when you were initially enamored with Lego? I'd say maybe about four or five. Around Carson's age. So when you say, yes, well, don't let it fool you, and she's saying here, <laughs> I'm sitting here going, do you remember being four? Do you remember being, what it felt like to be five? I no, mean, Your Honor. Okay, you don't. <laughs> it probably looked something like that, somewhere in that realm, right? Because the people who were looking at the exhibit, they weren't just adults, they were also kids, right? Yes. But you heard yes, what sir. she said, her kid was running around. That no, was right away running. You shouldn't running be running around. in any art exhibit anyway. No, 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 when no. you were five, when you were five, is it hard for you to recollect wanting to run around at five? I may have been a little rambunctious, I'll a admit that. A little rambunctious, mm -hmm. right? So we sure. understand that four and five-year-olds have a tendency to dart and run around because they've got all this energy because they're not old, right? <laughs> Art exhibit, <laughs> sir. Okay. Uh, Wait, was it at a museum or was it at a mall? It was at a mall, Your Honor. Mall! <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> okay. 
Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going on here. That's yes, the sir. issue, right? Yes, sir. We were at a mall, and there's these <laughs> Legos, and Legos are toys, sir. And my daughter was so excited to see them, and they were brilliant, colorful, and there were lots of children. They were taking. There was one Lego sculpture that was a horse yes. that the children were were climbing on, and they were taking pictures with. And there were An lots interactive of interactive sculpture. Okay. Yeah, totally different well, than what I had presented. But what, you, but what she's saying is true. There was a sculpture where kids were interacting on it. Uh, yes? Yes, sir. And yes, Carson, Your Honor. did you get a chance to get on the Lego with the horse? No. You didn't get on the Lego with the horse? There were so many people. Why there didn't so you get on that people. one? Because there were so many people on the horse, and there wasn't enough room for me to sit on it, so I, I decided the turtle because there was no one on the turtle. So the oh, turtle was a great substitute. <laughs> you were like, if I can't play on the, the horse, horse, the turtle will do, huh? And, and, and the turtle was so cute. <laughs> it was so cute. So, oh, You're boy. <laughs> I know, and that turtle was tempting. That turtle was saying, come sit on me, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. I don't feel in any way as a turtle a good substitute for a horse. Because you're no longer four. <laughs> Coming up on America's Court. There were no signs that, that said anything about no. What and was the color the of the rope? Sir? Red means stop. It's a universal She's... color. I got this. And later. Why are you now approaching him while he's just out DJing and playing 80s music? I admit I can be an overprotective brother. He catcalled my sister in front of me. Closed captioning provided by. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1 888 552 6878. If pets were easier to clean up after, more people would adopt. At Bissell, that's important to us. We engineered our pet hair eraser from the ground up for homes with pets. It's got an innovative, tangle-free brush roll, so hair goes in the tank instead of wrapping around the roller. And powerful edge-to-edge -edge suction, along with a hands-free empty canister that keeps you from touching the yuck. The best part is we make a donation to the Bissell Pet Foundation for each pet product we sell. The more we clean up, the more pets we can help. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. America's Court is back with the case of Randy Gunther, who is suing Sarah Wickham for property damage. And the issue is, what happened, Miss Wickham, when she sat on the turtle? Well, what, what happened was, is she saw the turtle. There were so many children by the horse. And my little girl, she sees it, and she was like, Mommy, I got to go. And she just darted. It was so fast. She was so excited. She ran to the turtle. There was, there was a rope around it, but she, she just, she was what so fast. What type of rope was around It was like a, a, a kind of a red cord. Like a um, velvet rope? Like a, yeah, like a medium-sized velvet rope. But and did it have the little clinks on, around on, it? On the sides, but it was pretty What are those high things called? Uh, you mean the, uh, the posts? Yeah. The yeah. There's, a, there's a name for those. I don't know, Your Honor. All right, but there's velvet there, attaching there, all four sides. On the four sides, there were no signs that, that said anything about no. What was, was the color straight, of the rope? Sir, I got this. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Was the turtle inside the roach? Yes, Your Honor, the turtle was inside. Was the turtle on the ground or was it elevated? It was elevated on, high, a, on a, high up? about one foot or so. One foot above the ground. What was it elevated on? It, it was a, a, a platform. I'm not sure what the platform there was. There was some sort of platform. And mm -hmm. where was the platform in relation to your body? Would well, you say it was closer to your knees? Was it closer to your waist? Oh, no, it was only about, uh, it was closer to my knees. Closer to your knees? Yes, sir. And on top of this platform was the turtle? Yes, sir. All right. Now, let's talk about why your turtle was positioned that way in terms of the velvet ropes and the platform. Me and the exhibition director have yes. spoken about it. He said, interactive ones, make it so children can go by it. Parents can go by it. It's all fine. But what we're going to do... There wasn't just one interactive, because we talked about this horse. There were other Lego sculptures that children can touch and interact with. Yes, that is very true. How many Unicorn. are we talking about, would you say? You I would said, say about six or seven that were interactive. And you said something about one was a unicorn and unicorn. a horse and some other animals. And, yeah. and they were all animals? They were all animals. Okay. And how far were these interactive animal Lego sculptures from where your turtle was? 
right next to it. Okay. And but that's not the point. It was roped. It's not your call to say what the point is. Your call is to tell me what I need to know based on questions I ask you. Yes, Your Honor. Got it? Now, you made it a point to have this conversation about how you wanted your turtle presented. Was there some sort of contest or was it just more of an exhibition? You sell these things that are, sorry, these sculptures, you sell them okay, mainly so these the things were for sale. They were. And that's why they were at the mall and did they have a price listed? They did. And yours was listed as how much? 550, I have the appraisal right here. And I'll take a look at that. As well yes. as a picture of the turtle before it was smashed. Let's take a look at the turtle. <laughs> You are a cold-hearted man, <laughs> giving her the stinky eye as you said the turtle was sna smashed. She Let's did take a, a very, very bad the... thing. Sir, I'm talking. She's four. Sir, she's four. Very creative. Very nice. Thank you, Your Honor. And so, Miss... Uh, Wickham, when you talk about the poles and the ropes, that's what you're referring to? Yes, sir. And the platform? Yes, sir. I Red understand. means stop. It's a universal she's, color. She's a little girl. Sir, you are not helping your case by being a jerk. I'm just being who I am. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me, all right? And the appraisal value is five hundred and fifty dollars. Um, Miss Wickham. Yes, sir. Why shouldn't uh, Mr. Gunther be compensated for the because well, the the uh, turtle broke? The turtle broke. Yes, Your Honor. When you sat on it, what happened, Carson? Well, what happened is I wanted to sit on the turtle because it was so cute and no one was on there, so I wanted to sit on it and I didn't know it'd break. But when you sat on it, what happened? It broke. It broke. <laughs> did you say you were sorry? I did, and I asked him if I could help refix it with him, but he, but he was too sad. He was too mad at me. He was he mad was, at you. Uh, Your Honor, he called her stupid. He, he came over. She was horrified. I was horrified. She had a scratch on her leg. I was terrified that she was hurt. And, and there were, you know, he came over just screaming at us, how could you let your stupid child do this? Let me ask you this, Carson. Do you know the difference between right and wrong? Yes. Okay. If someone doesn't tell the truth, is that right or wrong? That's wrong. It's wrong. If someone takes something that doesn't belong to them, is it right or wrong? It's wrong. Wrong. <laughs> Do you have any friends? Yes. Okay. Let's say there's a doll that you really like a lot and you give it to one of your friends to play with. You with me? You understand? Yes. And not intentionally, but your friend breaks the head off the doll. And that's your favorite doll. Right. And the person says, but I'm not going to give you any money or get you a new doll. Would that be right or wrong? Wrong. It would be wrong. This gentleman's entitled to be compensated. Yes, Your Honor. You will pay him that amount. Thank you, Thank you that Your Honor. That is the order. Case closed. Judge Ross has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $550. Lego sculpting is my passion, and just like that, Turtle was gone. Parents need to be more careful with their children around ours. I have no problem taking responsibility for my daughter's actions, but Legos are toys. You can just snap them back together. And coming up on America's Court with Judge Ross. Why are you now approaching him while he's just out DJing playing 80s music? He catcalled my sister in front of me. Closed captioning provided by when I have a breakout from eczema, I feel like I'm in this shell. Gold Bond Eczema Relief relieves five frustrating symptoms of eczema. My skin's back. This is America's Court with Judge Ross.
This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Stuart Mitchell claims he was just doing his job when his DJ equipment was broken during a scuffle with the defendant. Mr. Mitchell is suing Paul Samuels in the amount of $247. Mr. Samuels claims the plaintiff was being extremely rude and provoked him by catcalling his sister on the mic. Mr. Mitchell, what happened with your DJ equipment? So I was DJing on a street corner near campus. I was right, with my you're friend. You're a DJ? Yes, I am a DJ. I like to do that for fun. I'm a full-time college student normally. All right, but you're I like a college to... student that also DJs? Yes, that All is right. right. Now let me go to you, Mr. Samuels. Did you know previously Mr. Mitchell? I just had uh, uh, run into him. And how did you run into him? Well, he dropped off my sister one day at the house. And... Is this your sister here? Yeah, this is my sister Caroline. Ms. Samuels, come on up. Yes, Your Honor. And so you know Mr. Mitchell? I do. How do you know him? We, well, I know him from school. I go to the same school with him, undergrad. Right, so everybody course. goes to the same school? Right. All right. And you are currently in undergrad? Yes, undergrad. And how is it that you know Miss Samuels? We're both in the same history class. You're in the same history class? Yes, sir. You're doing your thing. You're DJing outside. Right. Why right. are you doing that? Is there a I, crowd? Right. Is there a party going on? It's the kind of thing where you DJ on a street corner and whoever passes by just has fun for a little while. That's a thing. That's a thing. That's a thing. It's not a thing. Okay. That's a thing. It's his thing. His, not I'm not bumping thing. 80s music. People pass by, they get in a good mood. Okay. You don't have any objective for doing this? No. You I just, just are just doing it to kill time. Yeah, I'm, I well, get I mean, it. I remember college. You got lots of time. Why are you now approaching him while he's just out DJing playing 80s music? Your Honor, I admit I can be an overprotective brother. Why did you have to approach him when he was just out playing 80s music? He catcalled my sister in front of me. Coming up on America's Court. He said, he, sound, he sounded ridiculous. He said, what did he say? Look at that girl with that big fat booty. Can I touch it again? Closed captioning provided by. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. America's Court is back with the case of DJ Stuart Mitchell, who is suing Paul Samuels for property damage. You and your sister are together, and while he's DJing, he says, what does he say? What does he say? It's a quote. He said... He, sound, he sounded ridiculous. He said... What did he say? Look at that girl with that big fat booty. Can I touch it again? Okay. So uh, there's a reference to her butt. While looking at me. I got it. Did you say that? I, I said that, okay. yes. <laughs> okay. I wasn't talking about her. I said it as a rap line. Did so I now you're a rap While artist? She, in her presence, and she's in close proximity. It could have been about looking. anybody. No, we're not talking. I thought you were a DJ. Do I look like a... Stop. Do I look like I'm an idiot? No, sir. Okay, you didn't like it. You guys get into it. There's a fight, right? Yes. And the equipment gets destroyed, and now you want to pay. You want yes. him to pay for it. I do. He's by his equipment, and he pushed me first, and he tripped over his cord. All right. And I thought. And you're saying he pushed you first. I'm saying that he got up in my face. Did you push him first? I, I was simply trying to defend myself. That's a yes, and you had damage to your property. Yes. I get it. Judge Ross's verdict when America's Court returns. You're watching America's Court with Judge Ross. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Based on the evidence and the testimony before this court, the gavel comes down in favor of the defendant. If you think I'm going to award you money for disrespecting a woman in a way that you think is hip and hot and this is 80, this is just a rap, no. Your matter's dismissed. Case closed. All right. Judge Ross has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. I know one thing. You better stay away from my sister. Obviously, I'm disappointed that I didn't get the money for my DJ equipment, but I never meant to make Carolyn feel violated by my actions. Follow America's Court on Facebook and Twitter.
This has been a production of Entertainment